Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that I've never taken a look at before. This distribution is called Regatta OS. Regatta OS is a Brazilian based distribution. It's based off of OpenSUSE and it's designed primarily for those that want to play video games or create content. So let me go ahead and switch to my desktop here and let me navigate to the Regatta OS website. Let's see if I can type correctly here. The website is written in Portuguese, but you do have a translation here. You can choose English here and it will translate the page into English for you. There's not a lot of information on the website, but here on the front page, the little blurb at the top of the screen tells you exactly what Regatta OS is all about. The latest version is version 23. I've already downloaded the ISO. Uh, it looks like they're going to have their own unique uh, gaming store and their own software center. One thing from the front page here is they talk about uh, GPUs especially. You can see Regatta OS already runs some applications with the dedicated GPU by default on AMD and NVIDIA laptops. And they do mention also about hybrid graphics. Hybrid graphics should work out of the box, hopefully on Regatta OS. I don't have any device to test that on. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick first look of Regatta OS inside a virtual machine. So I've spun up a virtual machine here. I gave this virtual machine six gigs of RAM. I gave it uh, two threads of my 24 thread Threadripper CPU. So let's go ahead and boot into Regatta OS. And we come to the screen here with the time and date. I'm assuming this is a login manager. If I click on anything or just hit enter, uh, I if I just happen to hit enter at the right time but I get into the live environment and the live environment is this KDE Plasma yes it is so that is cool so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and run through a quick installation of Regatta OS so let me click on the icon here and it does look like they're going to use the Calamaris installer so that's nice because I'm very familiar obviously with the Calamaris installer so the first thing I need to do is choose a language for the installer because by default the installer is in Brazilian Portuguese I want it in English so if I hit E to get to the E's here uh, British English American English there it is and now I can actually read what's going on in the installer program itself now let me click next and what do I want to do as far as partitions? I want to erase the disk and give the entire 25 gig virtual hard drive in this VM over to Regatta OS. And then I'll click next. And it looks like that's all we have to do. This is one of the most straightforward <laughs> installers I've ever seen. All you do is choose a language and then choose what you want to do with the partitions, I guess. So I'm just going to click the install button. It's going to warn us that it's going to format the drive right to the disk. I'm going to choose install now and away it goes this will probably take a few minutes so I'm gonna pause the video I'll step away grab me a cup of coffee I'll be back once this portion of the installation has completed and the installation has completed of course here in the Calamaris installer what you need to do is tick restart now and then click done and then reboot the machine to complete the installation one thing that the installer didn't do we didn't create a username and a password we didn't set the host name of the computer or any of that I'm assuming we'll take care of that once we reboot so let me go ahead and click done and reboot the machine and on reboot once again we get the screen with the time and date I'm assuming if I just click well I actually I didn't even need to click it just just goes ahead and uh puts us right into a live environment here. And this time, looks like the Calamaris installer again. Did I not? I may have needed to detach the ISO. No, it is the Calamaris installer again, but this time it is, it's different. <laughs> this is weird. So now we go through uh, setting up location, keyboard, and users, and all of that. Okay, well, let me choose American English, obviously, for the language, and let me, move this up so you can see the buttons here uh, the time zone it has correctly chosen the time zone that I'm in the central time zone here in the US I'm assuming it's using a uh, geolocation to figure that out uh, English US is the keyboard I'm just gonna click next on that and then let me go ahead and create my username I'm gonna call my user DT uh, we will make the host name of this computer we'll call this regatta dash vert and then let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user 
repeat the strong and complicated password, and then log in automatically without being asked for a password. I do not want that ticked on. I want to have to enter a password to get into any of my computers just for privacy reasons. You, you don't want random people just to be able to log into your computer. And then use the same password for the administrator account. That's the sudo account. Yes, you probably do want that ticked on. That way you don't have to remember two different passwords. DT's password and the sudo password will be the same password. So click next, location, keyboard, all of that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the setup. It's removing one package, probably is removing the Calamaris installer. <laughs> it's probably the package it had to remove. And then restart now is automatically ticked on this time. Let me go ahead and click done. And now we get to a proper login manager here. You can see the default session is Regatta OS X11, so it uses Xorg by default here, but you can switch over to Plasma Wayland if you want to use uh, KDE Plasma using Wayland as your display server. I'll just stick with the default, which is Plasma with Xorg. Let me go ahead and log in. And it logs us in just fine. Now let me go ahead and change the display resolution here. So if I just do a search for display, display configuration. Let me go ahead and change to a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution and hit apply and keep these changes. And now this virtual machine will remember from this day forward to always be 1920 by 1080 every time I log into KDE Plasma. I do notice down in the sys tray we do have a keyboard applet here. The keyboard layout looks like it's set to Brazilian Portuguese, but just clicking it automatically switches it to the English US layout. Clicking it again would switch it back to Brazilian Portuguese, so that's interesting. So let's take a look at what is installed out of the box here in Regatta OS. So if I go to the development category, we have Kate, which is KDE's a text editor, plain text editor, although I wouldn't call it a plain text editor. These days, Kate is more of a fully featured IDE. I go to about, this is Kate 23.04.3. Back into the menu system. Under the games category, this is really what we want to take a look at. Regatta OS Game Access. So I believe this is one of their custom applications because Regatta OS really is built with gaming in mind. And you can see, this is actually really cool because you can see available launchers. So if you have accounts for any of this stuff, Epic Games, GOG, Battle.net, EA App, Rockstar, uh, Ubisoft, I don't have accounts for any of these. I am not a gamer, so you're not going to see any benchmarking or me playing any of these games here on t today's video. But let's assume that I had one of the Epic Games. I could click on Epic Games. But install the Epic Game Store because it's not already installed, and then I'll log into the Epic Game Store. And I'm assuming I could do that with uh, good old games as well, Battle.net. Oh yeah, I could install any of these Battle.net games, such as um, Diablo 3 or Overwatch 2 or whatever it happens to be. So this is kind of cool. Let's take a look at the EA app. So this is going to be you know, a lot of sports games, obviously, and as well as the Star Wars games as well. Very cool Need for Speed. That can be fun. Yeah, I may have to actually play with this at some point on physical hardware that I would actually game. I, although, I, typically, I, I don't really game much. I can go weeks, sometimes months, logging into my Steam account. I have a Steam account. I've had a Steam account for many years. But I really don't game much. But other than that, other than the Regatta OS game access, that custom game application, we also have the Steam launcher here as well, which the Steam launcher, I'm assuming, would just do a Steam install, right? It's updating the Steam runtime environment here. I probably shouldn't have done that. This may take a few minutes. Steam's kind of a big program. Uh, but while that's running, I guess I could keep going through the menu here. Let's go into the graphics. We have Gwen View, which is uh, KDE's image viewer. Uh, let's cancel the Steam update. It's going to be a big update. Also under graphics, we have Ocular, which is the document viewer. Ocular is a, it's a document viewer. That's a PDF viewer, essentially, is what it is. If I go to About Ocular, it's also version 23.04.3. Also under graphics, we have ScanLight, which is an image scanning utility. Not too many people have a scanner these days, but if you still do, ScanLight, that's what that program is for. Under Internet, the default browser is Firefox. So let's go ahead and launch Firefox. Taking a second to load, and let's go to Help. And about Firefox, this is Firefox 116.0.2. Close Firefox. 
And other than Firefox, there's really not much else under the internet category. We have KDE Connect, uh, the Regatta OS App Store, which actually, strange that's under the internet category, but I'm assuming it's because when you install applications, you have to do it over the internet. I mean, that's standard for any app store, right? But that's just usually not where you expect the app store to be. Is Usually you don't expect it to be under an internet category, but I do like the, the store here. So we have discover here and I'm assuming this is just like a curated list of some of the more popular apps that they recommend such as Caden Live, Sims 4 and Discord you know obviously you got to promote some games you got to promote Discord because everybody that games probably has a Discord account as well so there's some proprietary software that they're pushing here but uh, you really can't fault them for that because uh, pretty much games and most gaming related software is all proprietary software under the create category I'm assuming this is all the content creation stuff because other than this being a distribution designed for gamers, it's also, it touts itself as being for content creation. So it's pushing things like OBS Studio, DaVinci Resolve, and DaVinci Resolve is also proprietary software. But hey, you know, if you want to use it, I, I understand it is kind of a standard as far as video editing. Me personally, I edit all my videos on, on free and open source software such as Caden Live, which I'm assuming is here as well. You also have things like Darktable and Raw Therapy. Uh, you know, for those of you that need to do any kind of uh, image editing and things like that, GIMP is also here for that as well. We also have a lot of uh, art tools paint tools, graphics tools such as Krita and Penta and Inkscape. Lightworks is also here for video editing. It's another proprietary video editor, but it's it's very popular. Although they mentioned it's free. It, Lightworks is free in cost. Same thing with uh, DaVinci. Like you can install them and use them for free, but they are limited on the features as far as the free version. I think the free version of Lightworks, you can only export to certain resolutions. I don't think it exports to uh, 1080p by default. You actually have to pay for a license to actually you know to, to actually be able to really use it you have to pay for these pieces of software i think the lightworks license the last time i looked at it it's been a few years it's like 300 dollars but of course you have your free and open source alternatives such as Caden Live as well. For audio editing you have things like Audacity. They've got pretty much all the content creation related applications you would expect to be here. But let me close out the App Store. Let's get back into the menu system. Under the multimedia category we don't have much here. VLC. So VLC it makes sense if you're trying to be kind of minimal because there's not a lot of things installed if you go through this menu system there's not much here and it makes sense under multimedia just to install vlc because it's kind of a jack of all trades vlc can be an audio player it's obviously designed to be a video player and it has all the various multimedia codecs that, that come with it out of the box so you, you got your uh, blu-ray playback and, and all of that stuff under the office category, there's nothing here. Ocular, the PDF viewer, is here. And a, a printer a configuration tool as well. Under settings, so this would be settings for basically the system settings, like the plasma system settings here. So, you know, if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to change the theme from dark to light or light to dark or whatever it is you're trying to do, you guys have seen the plasma settings manager before so let's just discard all of that some other things under settings you do have wine tricks because some of the games you're going to want in to install will be windows only games that you could install in a wine wrapper so that's cool that that's there you also have yast for administration settings remember uh, this is based on open SUSE, so that's why we're using yast in this case yast has to be run as root so i had to enter a sudo password so this is some of the uh, system settings here. For example, you've got some software configuration, hardware configuration, uh, system configuration, including uh, configuring the bootloader. Well, that could be dangerous. Probably don't want to do that. Network services as well. Security and users. So this would be things like your firewall, for example. We have a miscellaneous category as well. Let me go, go ahead and close out the YAST control center. Getting back to the menu, we have a system category. So this would be your system system tools such as your archiving tool which is KDE's ARC so that is for zip unzip things like that we have wine here we have dolphin which of course is KDE Plasma's file manager really nice file manager also under system we have our firewall configuration we have console with a K that's KDE's console that's our terminal emulator and let me 
zoom in a little bit. Let me do a uname dash R. Let's see what kernel version we are on. We're on kernel 6.4.10. Now let me do a where is Pipewire. Let's see if they're using Pipewire for the audio server. They are because the where is did return something, right? You can see the location to the Pipewire binary. Let's see how many packages are installed out of the box here. So I'm assuming they're using Zipper because that is the uh, package manager for OpenSUSE. So if I do a zipper search space dash I for installed. So search for all the packages that are installed and it should give me a list, a list each package on its own separate line, which that then makes it really easy to then up arrow and then pipe that information into WC space dash L. WC, the word count program dash L, give me a line count instead of a word count, and that will tell me how many lines of output were in that command. And 2,995 uh, programs are essentially are installed. That's what that tells me. Now I could update the system with the graphical uh, software center, but if I did a sudo, I haven't used zipper in a while, but I'm assuming it's sudo zipper, is it update? Let's give it the sudo password. I don't use OpenSUSE very often at all. So, you know, sometimes I go many, many months between uh, running OpenSUSE or in this case, an OpenSUSE based distribution, but I do have a lot of updates available. The ISO, Obviously, it was not that new. It looks like the following 49 packages will not be installed, and I'm assuming the following 802 packages will be upgraded. So if I run a system-wide update right now, it's going to update 802 packages. I'm actually going to decline that because that would take forever, and I don't want to waste time with the update. One last thing I want to check is let's see what kind of wallpapers ship with Regatta OS. So let me right-click on the desktop and choose Configure Desktop and Wallpaper, and let's see if they have a custom wallpaper pack or if they're just using some of the standard uh, wallpapers that ship with plasma yeah there's really nothing here I, I believe I've seen some of these before looks like just some abstract art although these are kind of nice although this picture is actually really really dark oh a really really dark wallpaper though would look great if you use a light plasma theme uh, this one here is a little lighter this one here, a little lighter yet still, because I'm using a dark theme, Plasma Dark, it looks like a light wallpaper would work best. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm not crazy about the colors. Yeah, that's not bad either. I could probably just go with that. So that was just a quick and cursory look at Regatta OS. There's really not much to it as far as installed programs. It's quite minimal actually out of the box as far as the number of programs that are installed. Again, Regatta OS, its claim to fame, what they're trying to be is a distribution for the gamer and for the content creator. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Daniel, Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Methos, Nate, Urian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Reality, Teach for Lust, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tools, Devler, War, Gen 2, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Regatta OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I depend on you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace.